Well, let's turn to the hurling yesterday. Kilkenny 2.23, Tipperary 2.16. Kilkenny are league champions for an 18th time in their history and they have won half of those 18 league titles under Brian Cody. So Cody now has nine league titles and I checked, the most any other manager has is three. Tommy Welch and uh, Dahi Regan, All-Ireland winners, are on the line. Uh, rule number one, Dahi, don't ever write off Brian Cody. Yeah, well, we all got our knuckles wrapped on that and I have absolutely no problem saying that after the first two games I, I wasn't totally surprised. Um, and you look at it and you say to yourself, well, it is Brian Cody. I mean, is is I always felt that Kilkenny could sustain the loss and there's nothing you can do about players when, when it comes to retirement. I always felt the one thing they probably couldn't sustain was the loss of Brian Cody for the very simple reason that the core values that helped to make up and backbone the great lads that won all those All-Ireland Finals and the glue that held them together and the, 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 the operator was always Cody. And I always felt if he went, he'd lost the culture and someone else has to create and we're going to be up to creating and maintaining the culture that he had. The gift, and I credit him for this, is that he's been able to bring up to speed a lot of these younger fellas like the likes of Conor Delaney and Deegan and Sheehan and Alan Murphy and these guys. And he's brought them in to understand the Kilkenny culture, which is a pretty ruthless one that you have a responsibility when you go out into the park. And it's taken a very short period of time for these guys to know my responsibility is to be a man, to get out here, hurl it hard, win my own ball, stand out and start showing myself as being capable of winning and wearing a Kilkenny jersey. And he's created this... this. Now, let's, let's not all get carried away either, but I, for one, certainly did not see Kilkenny after the first two rounds of the National League as been potential winners. They were, in my view, uh, definite strong potential mate- material for relegation. Um, so it's an extraordinary turnaround and an extraordinary result really is and credit to all the players of course but it would not have happened if that that man was not over them yeah he's pretty special Tommy as I'm sure you know uh, close up I was reading Michael Dignan yesterday he was previewing the game in his uh, piece in the mail on Sunday and he was just kind of saying you know in some ways Cody has gone back to basics and he's looked at the spine of the team and he's got your brother in at three and Killian Buckley in at six and TJ Reid at 11 and uh, Walter Welch in at 14 and almost built around them it's kind of an old school type approach in some ways uh, what stood out about what Kilkenny have done over the last number of weeks for you? Yeah, well, Joe, um, I think you hit the nail in the head. Um, I heard Gerlach Nan speaking about it. Basically, he was asked, what's the story with this Kilkenny team? They've got it right up the centre. And that, that's all is the spine of your team. They're your leaders. They're your guys. When you're in trouble, you need guys to win dirty ball. They're the guys who stand up in the in the heat of battle. You have power to get three, four or five years of experience. Buckley is there since 0-12. TJ is there. She was a sub, came on in the 0-8 and scored four points from play from, from, from the bench. Mm. And you have big Wally full forward. So the main players, and you look at the size of them guys and their ability to win ball in the air. Like the hardest skill in the game, Joe, is to win your own ball. Because it's grand when things are going nice. well for you. But when, when, the ball, when, the, when the game is there in, in the melting pot... Who do you need to, to win the ball? Your ball winners. Mm. And them boys are up this centre. And I think that's massive. Dahi tipped on uh, uh, on the, the point about the young fellas and Brian Cody's ability to bring in these young fellas. But you need the guys that are there a few years yeah. to be able to do that. You take Joe Canning in Galway a few years ago, Joe. He came out of, of minor. I think he possibly could have took a year off, maybe travelling or that, but came in the year after that. Everyone in Galway wanted him to win the All-Ireland for Galway straight away. You can't do that with 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds. You need the main guys to take all that pressure off. And then the young fellas just to come in and kind of play their position, win their own position. Mm. I think that's what Kilkenny are doing this year. But the big thing on top of that, Joe, is they're playing this year without any shackles. The shackles are off. They're playing with freshness. They're playing as if they're out in their back gardens again so they can go out and uh, just enjoy themselves, which leads to them getting, playing well. And when you say the shackles are off, like, do, you mean, um, do you mean tactically in some ways? Because Jackie Tyrrell was writing a piece on, um, the, on the Friday before the game in the Irish Times, you know, and he was uh, talking about the Wexford game and he said he was, seeing, you know, he was enjoying seeing Kilkenny play some short passes and he was talking about the support lines are running and he was saying even in his day, if a cornerback had run up the pitch, you'd have JJ Delaney saying, what the hell are you doing? You know, you're like, where the hell do you think you're going kind of thing? So is that what you mean when you say the shackles are off or it just mean generally pressure, they don't look like they're under pressure? 
generally, I suppose um, it, it's a lot of things feed into it. It's not yeah. just one thing, but that's definitely a massive thing, Joe. Because if you go back to last year, what's kind of dominating the game at the moment? Your defensive systems, your sweeper systems. What was the Kilkenny traditional game? Get the ball in my day. It was as I said here before. <laughs> it was it was easy for me. I get the ball, get rid of it as fast as I can. Mm. Up to all the boys that are well able to win their own ball. Would I be able to do that today? No, because they've guys back there able to, the sweepers are, are mopping up everything. Mm. So last year they were still probably playing a lot of that same game because we won so much with it. But because the opposition had his red, they were coming out with the ball after ball. So what does that lead? You're kind of down in the dumps. What, what am I doing wrong? I'm training hard in the gym. I did all the pre-season. Mm. All the, the the kind of fitness tests were off the scales accordingly last year. But still, when I went out in the match, they looked like a team that wasn't really flowing. Mm. So you're right, Joe. Probably a shift in tactics has led to the guys playing with a bit of freedom because now the supporters, they're kind of praising them as opposed to getting on their backs, asking for all these uh, older players to come back. Mm. Now they're kind of looking at these players with, I suppose, uh, a sense of excitement. But uh, definitely the change in tactics is definitely a big thing. But Joe, you go to yesterday. So yesterday was different again. So it's an ability to adapt because against Tipperary, Kilkenny and Tipperary, pride themselves on being great hurling counties. Yeah. Guys that are able to play the traditional way. We'll launch that ball and the best guy will win it. We have the players and we won't back down from anyone. So yesterday, while both half forwards went back into their defences a lot, they were kind of playing a 15 versus 15 kind of a game. And so, yeah, no, I think the tactics, like yesterday, they changed it up, but I think yeah. the tactics earlier on in the season yeah, worked. that's a very interesting point. That adaptability, and I did well. Look, it's one of the reasons we all look forward to the Kenny Tipperary games because we know we're going to just get the ding dong fifteen on fifteen, and and let's let's see who comes out on top. Just one last point on that before I bring uh, Dahi, and I want to talk about TJ Reid in a second. Is it your sense, Tommy, that Cody has driven this tactical change, or is Cody maybe listening more to those around him, or do you know? He has always listened. Um, Would well, he not we have been fairly have... fairly? Belligerent and well, belligerent in a good way. I would have thought he was his own man. No, he was his own man as regards when he made a decision. But he would always listen. Like from from when we went in on the panel in, in you know the early two thousands, we always had team meetings. We always had group discussions. Um, he has three or four selectors there. He always listens to them. But I suppose at the end of the day, you're right. He probably makes a decision at the end of the day yeah. and goes with his own gut instincts. But he will listen to the players. Like You go back and, and, and actually analyse Kilkenny from zero, we'll say when I can only, I suppose, when I was in there from zero, two on. We changed our styles a lot. Might have been noticeable to the public. Yeah. But we did as regards the as as it was going on, say we would have been known, Dahi would have known us for staying in our own positions. But in the zero eleven final we changed that. Then again they changed it again in zero thirteen or zero fourteen. So we have changed it over the years. But I suppose the sweeper system was the one we used to always beat anyway, no matter what we done. It was never really one that got us. Mm. But I think the last two years it was the one that was starting to I suppose we were finding it harder to get around. Yeah. Uh Dahi, T J Reid, you're kinda of running out of things to say about this guy now. Well, that was a, it was an, a sensational performance, really, wasn't it? I mean, every every skill, every facet of his game. I mean, his his fetching ability in the air was was extraordinary. Uh, but his timing, it's the timing, it's 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 his timing of the jump under a dropping ball. And what he can do is he can take a puck out in front of of a half back. What he does then, he's a great gift at drifting in for a puck out behind a man. And just getting to the pitch and getting the hand in in front of, be it whichever matter, or, or Barry yesterday as well. It's, it's timing. It's absolutely sensational. He got a, he got a point in the first half where he salomed through the tip half. He dummied a pass and then took it at speed an extra two yards away from James Barry and struck it on the run. And it was as good a piece of skill as you'll see. Mm. He also actually struck a ball in the second half down under the main stand where and, and it's going back to what Tommy's talking about, Kilkenny's style of hurling changing. I mean, there was there was definitely a noticeable change a few years back in. There was more support play. There was more players making themselves available. They weren't changing structurally the way that they played in 
in that they were playing a sweep or anything like that. Kilkenny were are not adverse to playing two inside. They reverted to it against Galway in the second half of that All Ireland and caused an awful lot of problems when they went with two and kind of isolated. So Kilkenny are able to do tactics, but it's tactics just utilising great hurlers and using the skills of the game to the best of their ability. But there is a discernible and a notice change now. At times yesterday, I actually thought it was overdone a small little bit, some of the passing. But I think I think a, a key and a core difference with Kilkenny now is it's there's a lot more heads up hurling. Whereas when you go back maybe seven, eight years ago, the whole country was talking about the beauty of what Kilkenny was doing with the simplicity where if Tommy Walsh got a ball, it wasn't that Tommy Walsh didn't have the ability to pick Eddie Brennan out 60 yards away, but Tommy Walsh was as happy to get a ball, win his area and win his, his part of the turf that he needs to, and let it go as long and as far. And the, the view of the, the hurling public was that, well, Brian Cody says, if he gets it down there, it's up to Eddie Brennan to win it, and if Eddie can't win it, I'll get someone else in. Yeah. What Kilkenny appear to be doing now is a lot more heads up hurling, where they'll give they'll give a 10-yard pass or they'll utilize the hand pass to the guy who's free, which is now allowing him, you know, circumvent if there is a spare man there because there's no rush clearances or cleared for the sake of doing it. So he's looked as much at, as at other teams and at the way they're setting up uh, as to, right, how do we get around this policy? Tip, to me, have been masters at it the last few years. Yeah. Playing a really good brand of hurling and, and circumventing the sweeper by playing great diagonal ball and taking him over and bubbles coming out but then you have someone like Bubbles who can get a ball and turn 50 yards and over the shoulder. But getting back briefly to, to Reed, he is by far, and Jason Ford was superb yesterday. There was a huge reliance on TJ Reed yesterday, and there was a huge reliance on Wally as well, who I thought was splendid. Um, Kilkenny need to supplement what TJ is doing because at the minute he's unhurlable, and that's, that's quite a thing to say about him. And I see someone had, 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 had something put up. Is he as good as Henry Shefflin? Well, I think it's a, it's a pointless exercise on any social media forum to ask right this minute, is he? What he is, he's the main man for them at the moment up front. There's no doubt about that. But he's playing in a different era. Let's, let's, let's keep those judgments for, for other days. But right now, when you have someone like himself and, and Wally and a back line where there's a really good structure there, Kilkenny are good. Kilkenny are very good. How far will it bring them? We don't know. But yeah. all of a sudden, what it does is we're now talking about Kilkenny big time, along with Tip and along with, uh, with Galway as any one from those three. It was pretty much any one from those two. It's now very definitely any one from those three at the minute. Yeah, it was quite striking, even after the early defeats in this league campaign, that Cody would not even engage with the question where the word transition was used. He just would not allow that word to become part of the vernacular. He shot it down. I, I just don't think he wanted the players to even have half an excuse. Um, I think, yeah, I yeah. think, Joe, you just hit, I really think, I was going to come in and say it, but you, you've just said it, it's he didn't want to give an excuse to the yeah. players because it's very, very easy to sit back and, and, and fall into a sense of security. Now, and I thought about it looking at the game yesterday. If, if you look at the winners that's there, like the Porig Walshes of this world, Wally and TJ Reid, I would say those guys, and, and Tommy would know far better, I, I would hope and expect that Brian Cody would expect serious leadership from those guys because you could argue that that if they were in the comfort zone now, they'd say, OK, we're expected to give the same as we did in all the years we won All-Irelands and we don't really sniff a chance of an All-Ireland final. I think they do. Mm. And I think Cody demands that off of those leaders as well to make sure that the new players that come onto it aren't taking a bit of a sabbatical and six months to, you know, to get into it. I think there's a demand from the management, but from the senior players there as well, yeah. to put and grab them by the jugular and say, here's what you're part of now. You better start now because there is no tomorrow. Yeah. I'd be interested in Tommy's take on that. Yeah, I'd say, feel free to, to come in on that, Tommy. And also, uh, can you talk about TJ Reid coming in? Because it's certainly seen from the outside, Tommy, like... Well, not not unlike several other players under Cody, but uh, he took a while, TJ Reid, to convince him that he was worth the starting place and that he could fully trust him. I mean, like, was, was it obvious as soon as TJ walked in the door he was going to be, uh, well, the superstar he's become? Um, he was always going to be a good player and a very good player, um, Joe, because I mentioned a few minutes ago, the ability, the hardest skill in the game to win your own ball. He was one of the top guys in it at 17, 18 years of age. 
He was a master of winning his own ball. High or low? Because TJ, first of all, spent, before he came to Kilkenny, I'd say seven days out of seven, probably two or three hours a day, he was out against the wall. Mm. His whole family, Bally Hales, they're all like that, but the Reeds especially, they're always known as, as, as the hurlers. These are the guys that just wanted the ball. Jim's running, they weren't as much inter- <laughs> interested in that, tracking back, you know. Yeah. They were just the guys that, kind of went around, got the ball, scored 1-3 every game. Or I always thought when Bally Hale were going well, one of the reads would be man of the match. That's yeah. how good they were. And TJ was no different. Was he always going to be a great player? That was the question that TJ had to answer himself, Joe. And that's the question, I suppose, Brian Cody asked of him. I was looking at Austin Gleeson giving interviews last week and he was talking about the pressure that he was on, he felt, I suppose, last year. And um, he was asked, what, what was he going to change this year? And uh, basically he said... He can be double marked maybe because he's he's one of these standout players at the moment for Watford. What is he going to do? He's going to go around if he's not in the game and get two or three hooks in. Mm. He's going to chase a guy down. Mm. That was the difference between TJ Reid becoming a good player and a great player. I think TJ Reid, even now, if he was to finish today, would go down as, as one of the greats. Yeah. He's been absolutely brilliant. For and did, Co- did Cody you know? have to give him tough love, Tommy, or did he, did he know himself he needed to improve that aspect of his game, the hard work? Well, he wasn't always being picked. Like he, he only came really irregular around uh, zero thirteen, zero forty. He was kind of injured in zero thirteen. Yeah, uh, he got the ba- bad injury, I think, in the All Ireland final in zero twelve. But two thousand and fourteen really met him. So he, he, I don't know what age he was at that stage. His late twenties, I'd say, before yeah. he was, uh, you know. And, and that's why I'm, so I'm half wondering what Cody made of him during those early to mid twenties years. Yeah, so he, he just saw him as a brilliant player, but a guy I I reckon that wasn't going to when TJ wasn't in the game because he can't always be in the game. Yeah, what's he going to add to the team? And that's where the questions were asked of TJ, mm. and he's been answering them since probably zero fourteen. I know it's just it was at the game, it was behind the goal, uh, the Ted Carroll stand, one of the new stands in in Nolan Park, and there was one stage where TJ lost the ball and he chased. I forget who he chased, but he chased one of the Tipperary players. I think it could have been um, Brendan Maher and he chased him 30-40 yards he didn't hook him or anything but instead of Brendan Maher getting the point which he's temporary got his love doing solo in big point that lifts the whole stand TJ followed him and followed him he wasn't right up against him at the start but by the end of it he basically hounded him at the two or three Kilkenny lads mm. they took the ball off him back down the field that's what TJ Reid started to do. So when he wasn't in the game, he was able to do something and suddenly he's back in the game. The confidence is up, Joe, and on you go again. Yeah, well, that's what turned TJ Reid and that's what Brian Cody, I think, changed, changed in TJ. Well. That's very interesting. And geez, what a message if you're a young player out there and you see TJ Reid working that hard. I mean, it's fairly obvious what you have to do. And um, before, before the clock really comes against us, Dahi, the, the Tipperary failings here have been talked about a lot already today. I saw Brennan Cummins in his piece in the Irish Independent was just talking about the quality of ball into the forwards, this kind of long ball into forwards who a lot of people don't think can really win their own ball. Um, and, and that, um, I don't know if we want to call it the Eamon O'Shea ethos that we, we saw uh, Tipperary perform brilliantly with over the last decade at times. Uh, didn't seem to be there yesterday. What, what stood out for you? Well, I, I, I read that and I would have to disagree. Right. And I would have to disagree with a lot of the comments, to be honest with you, because I actually believe there's four to start and tip forward line yesterday. No disrespect to them. I, I, I think they're they're kind of in embryonic stage, a lot of these young fellas. There's four of them that won't start in the championship if everybody is back fit. I was actually impressed with Tipperary for periods of the game yesterday. Um, I thought some of the long ball that went in, at times they were very unlucky not to get onto the breaks. I thought they were threatening early. I thought Tipper actually hurled them well early. Um, I thought young Connors was as game as anything. Mm. I thought Ford was... was 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 excellent for the bulk of the game. Uh, John McGrath showed some great touches, but you know, Curran, McCarthy, Breen, and these fellas, Willie Connors, are they going to be championship starters? Yet they were in a league final, and they're the bulk of the forward line that's got them to a league final, and they're better much vaunted Limerick side. I think yesterday is more about Kilkenny, but in relation to Tipperary, I have to say, I think. I think Michael Ryan will take a lot out of this league game. I think he'll take a lot out of yesterday in relation to who will stand up and who is ready for it. I think what he will know is that that forward line, as they started yesterday, uh, aren't a good enough sextet to win him big championship games. But 
when you factor in the Callanans and the Bonner Mahers and the Bubbles and these fellas back into it, and a mixture of those guys coming in 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 and out during the course of the championship, I would disagree with a lot of the comment about the game yesterday. I thought it was enthralling from start to finish. Yeah. I thought Kilkenny's defence was superb, but I thought at times Tip did look threatening. They didn't win the final. They can't get over Kilkenny in the bulk of games that they play, and that is a problem. There's no doubt about it. Kilkenny have no fear of Tip whatsoever. Tip give the mantra that we have no fear of Kilkenny. Well, it's one thing not having fear, but you're going to have to start, you know, being more assassin-like with Kilkenny because they have your number and they've had it for years. Mm. But there's a lot good with this Tip side. I would not rule them out based on yesterday. I think there's a lot good there, and I think it's boiling up to be a superb championship. All right, okay, that's that's definitely the most generous as- assessment I've heard of Tip. Tommy, what did you make of them? Well, I think Michael Ryan has a massive um, work on his hands, Joe. Um, la- this time last year, the Galway defeat, we thought it was going to... I suppose they were going to learn their lessons, that they couldn't be complacent, go out then and, and suppose go on and win the championship. As everyone knows, they went back into their box then for the next two or three months. They were all playing with no confidence. They, they were playing as if there was no spirit in the team. They were playing with their heads down, uh, shoulders down. Michael Ryan, they put in so much effort to win that match yesterday. All the interviews all week, we want to go, we want to win a league final. Seamus Callan is the only lad with a league uh, medal uh, still on the panel I think since 08 mm. so they were coming down to win that so it's a massive disappointment for him not to win that yesterday this wasn't a game where Michael Ryan said listen lads we want a performance here and if we perform well we'll be happy no I'm sure he said to them lads we're going here to beat Kilkenny mm. and we're going to get one over on him and they didn't so I think Michael Ryan has massive work on his hands now one thing that will benefit him is I think they're going off for four weeks now to, to club activity sometimes a change is as good as, good as a rest yeah. so they'll go off they won't see each other maybe I think they're off next week then they'll start coming back and his I think his big work to, for this Tipperary team going forward is to get their heads back up after this massive disappointment getting back playing with a pep in their step because as Dahi said all during the league we were wondering who would stop him and um, it, that can't just just because they lost one match against Kilkenny one a top team who you know are very hard to beat in finals mm. that can't derail their season so Joe I think it's up to Michael Ryan to get these guys back and say listen we have Limerick on I think the middle of May let's go and get our I suppose just get the confidence back yeah and, and do you agree uh, Dahi's saying maybe some of the ball into the forwards wasn't as bad as has been suggested and also obviously there's there's a number of forwards who are going to come back in and be able to win their own ball did you were you looking on thinking that as a Kilkenny defender you'd be eating up what they were serving into the forward line uh, no because um, if that was against the defensive system Joe I'd say yes right. because they, they, they predominantly send in long balls and yeah. they've always been able to handle the sweeper so you can't really fault them for their long diagonal balls and that so just because it didn't work yesterday you can't just say that um, their, their, their systems or their, their long ball uh, let them down mm. so I would say no I'd say that's an excuse you know if I Michael Wright and Taunton lads don't be listening to the supporters telling you that Um this has worked for us all year just because it didn't work in the final doesn't mean our system uh, isn't working so I would say no not against Kilkenny because it was basically man versus man so so if it's not a systemic fault then um, then it's just about a bit of fight maybe I think they were bet by a better team in the second half. Like we were, I was genuinely worried as a Kenny supporter at half time and talking to a few guys around the grounds. You know, we felt we were hanging in there. But I think that's probably what happened yesterday. I think really is Kilkenny hung in there when in the first probably 10, 15 minutes when Tipperary were on top. The scoreboard wasn't uh, wasn't reflecting that. So what were Kilkenny doing? They were hanging in there, maybe with a hook here, a block there. Mm. When Kilkenny got on top in the first 10-15 minutes in the second half, they opened up a 5-6 point lead. Yeah. So maybe uh, that could be something to look at. And what does that come down to? It's hard to know because I'm so trying to solve that one my whole, whole <laughs> career. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, a last one to you, Di, then. Because I remember sitting beside you at the 2016 final and you saw ball after ball into Callanan, but into space and he was running onto them. And uh, it just seemed a more intelligent approach. Is that not where we want Tipperary to get back to? And I appreciate Callanan is going to come back into the side. Maybe he, maybe his runs dictate that kind of ball. Yeah. I don't know. Joe, Joe's the calibre player. I mean, if you look at both forwards, both forward lines on show yesterday. Walter Walsh and TJ Reid dictated matters up front yeah. for Kilkenny. Tip had Jason Ford. And that, and, and that really is it. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, Tommy is completely right in what he's saying. You factor back in Bonnermar, you factor back in Noel McGrath, you factor back in Callanan, 
and you, you, and and uh, bubbles, and all of a sudden you you have a sensational forward yeah, it's line. Different ball Who game possibly then. could have taken that Kilkenny full back line? Respects to Porig, respects to, to to Paddy Deegan, who was superb yesterday. You know, could Joey Holden been been, been taken to the cleaners yesterday? Ar- arguably, if Bubbles was there for the whole game or Callanan. So we need to keep a perspective on it. Mm-hmm. To me, the bottom line was T.J. Reid, and and to a, to a lesser extent but not far behind Wally, were the key differences yesterday. Tip's forward line had good lads, good young fellas, and their day'll come. But they were shorn of some of the best forwards in the country, and later in the year we may see them go head-to-head again. Yeah. So Kilkenny were brilliant, and they were the better side, and Tommy's right. But I think Michael Ryan will have taken what he needs to take out of it. When he gets his full complement of forwards, forwards back, they have good subs, one or two good subs there that he knows are well worth throwing in. Championship is a way different animal, way different animal. That's the one thing I would caution about. Lads, brilliant stuff. We'll leave it there. Dahi Regan, Tommy Welsh. Thanks, lads. Cheers, Thanks, John. Thanks, Thanks Bye, Tom. Off the ball on News Talk. At Bruce Betting, we're celebrating 40 years as one of Ireland's leading bookmakers with the launch of our brand new website and iOS app. Packed with features and easy to use, the new Bruce Betting app includes ACA Insurance, Cash Out and Live Casino. Bruce Betting, giving you more. In store, online and now on your